a kilometer from the surface beyond the reach of the sun. A giant black void, larger than all the rest of the world's habitats combined. There's life here, but not as we know it. Alien-like creatures produce dazzling displays of light. Nearly all animals need to attract mates and repel predators. This language of light is so widespread here that these signals are probably the commonest form of communication on the entire planet. And yet, we still know little about them. Hunters illuminate themselves and, by doing so, attract inquisitive prey. This is Fang Tooth. It has the largest teeth for its size of any fish. There are precious sensors all over its head and body, which can detect anything moving in the surrounding water. It's the Midnight Zone's most voracious fish. But prey use light as a distraction. A decoy of luminous ink. Down here, in this blackness, creatures live beyond the normal rules of time. Siphonophores are virtually eternal. They repeatedly clone themselves, some eventually growing longer than a blue whale. Snows. Continuous clouds of organic debris drift slowly down from above. This is food, and a whole variety of filter feeders depend on it. Jellyfish. And delicate sea cucumbers. The 1% of marine snow they miss eventually settles on the sea floor.
Over millions of years, it forms a layer of mud up to a kilometer thick. It's an empty plain that covers half the surface of our planet. The deep seabed may at first appear lifeless, but it's home to a unique cast of mud dwellers. The sea toad. It is an ambush predator with an enormous mouth and infinite patience. This fish has been living for so long here that its fins have changed into something more useful. Feet. They help it shuffle about on the seafloor. Jack Octopus. It hovers just above the surface of the mud as it delicately sifts through it, searching for worms. But it can jet away at the first sign of danger. 1,000 million tons of sea creatures ascend from the deep ocean to search for food near the surface. They graze on the phytoplankton under cover of darkness. Even so, they're far from safe. Other marine hunters follow them, some traveling up from hundreds of meters below. the whole procession returns to the safety of the dark depths. If you want to find the greatest number and variety of animals that communicate with light, you have to go to the darkest place on Earth. Somewhere far beyond the reach of the sun's rays, where human beings hardly ever go, to the depths of the ocean. This is the Johnson Sea Link. At the front, it has an array of remotely controlled television cameras and searchlights. I'm sitting beside the pilot in the transparent bubble in the middle, and the whole craft is massively strengthened to withstand the huge pressures of the depths. As we go down, it gets darker and darker. The water is thick with small floating organisms. Okay, Roger, Sam. 
At 600 feet, the water outside is 20 times atmospheric pressure. The temperature is within a few degrees of freezing, and we're far beyond the reach of the sunshine. So you might think in such a hostile environment, there would be very few animals living. But watch this. The chorus of light is being made by hundreds of small deep sea creatures which are flashing in response to my light. And now, if I turn on the lights of the submersible, we may catch a glimpse of one of these strange deep sea creatures as it drifts by. The pilot has remote controls for the camera outside the sub to search for them in the blackness. This is a comb jelly as big as a football. It's been nicknamed Big Red, but it has yet to be given a proper name. It's new to science. Another new undescribed comb jelly. Although specimens have been brought to the surface, it's only been seen alive through the windows of deep sea craft like this. It uses a pair of long retractable tentacles to catch fish. A jellyfish, Solomissus, two feet across, which, in spite of the changes of pressure, sometimes swims quite close to the surface. Keomia, another comb jelly, one that is surrounded by gauzy skirts. But for the most sensational spectacle, you have to turn the lights of the submarine off. A jellyfish outlined by its own pulsing illumination. A squid, its lights moving as its body throbs. Displays like this may serve for defense or to send messages. No one knows. And most spectacular of all, another jellyfish with its own amazing rhythmic flashing system. Even in the dark zone, there is some light. Turn off the submersible headlights and you see a pyrotechnic display outside. These lights are created by animals. This is bioluminescence. A deep sea anglerfish flashes in the darkness. The light is generated by bacteria that live permanently inside the lure, which attracts prey to these murderous teeth. There are all sorts of lures out in the darkness. Come into my mouth, little fish. And what is the purpose of this lure, suspended on a long rod way below its owner's terrifying set of teeth? It's difficult to be sure. But then this monster does have another giant flashing lure much closer to its mouth. These fish are called anglers because they use their lures in much the same way as fly fishermen use their imitation flies. For a hunting squid with huge eyes, this glimmer is intriguing. It might just be food.
In the Gulf of Mexico, these eruptions also release a super salty liquid. Brian. It's heavier than seawater, and it accumulates in great pools on the seafloor. It's difficult to make sense of the site. A lake of concentrated salt water, 15 meters deep, at the bottom of the sea. Around its margin, perhaps even more strangely, there is a profusion of life. Giant mussels that can live and grow for a century or more pack tightly together, dwarfing the shrimps and squat lobsters that feed around them. Cutthroat eels, scavengers, come to the shores of the Bryan Lake in search of something edible. Some even venture into the Bryan. Spending too long in it can send an eel into toxic shock. Its only hope is to rise above it. manages to escape. Others are not so lucky. The brine embalms their bodies and the casualties of decades accumulate around the margins. <laughs> 